The Ital RS4 has been designed with budget gaming and a score focus that on paper offers the same hardware for almost half the price of other competitors. You certainly find it looking like the Realme 12 series from the rear with that huge circular camera module and the Fox leather back panel with zipline stitches across the middle. Except that of the Ital RS4 in a silver white which I have here was made of a plastic glossy finish with a racing inspired sticks. There's a USB-C port at the bottom, the main speaker grill, a primary microphone with an audio port. The second stereo speakers are up top, SIM card slot on the left and the power button and volume rockers on the right side. It's a device with a side-mounted fingerprint sensor and is easy to use, responsive and mostly accurate. Up front it got a 6.5 inches IPS LCD panel with a punch hole at the top of the display for its 8 megapixel front camera. The bomber here will be the display which could be underwhelming for most conscious buyers due to its relatively low resolution and pixel density. However, its biggest redeeming feature in this department was the inclusion of a 120Hz refresh rate which I think wasn't necessary for that 7020 pixel display. You can either set it to 60 or 90Hz depending on your need and battery consumption. Plus, it's also Google Wide Vine L1 certified for Netflix and Prime Video's HD Plus streaming. You can also tell the screen isn't the brightest when viewed at certain angles, but it's acceptable for daily use. Just don't expect a comfortable viewing experience outdoors or under direct sunlight. For the overall build quality, the Ital RS4 can easily not survive every knocks and drops. The screen is not protected from cunning gorilla glass of any kind and there is no IP rating to speak of. Hence, I wouldn't recommend this if you're planning to use your new smartphone for a longer period of time. The Ital RS4 is not the best camera smartphone out there. Sometimes it shoots good looking photos and sometimes you get a dull and grainy looking photos. As said earlier, the core focus of this device was for budget gaming, hence the not so impressive 50 megapixel primary lens which can also shoot up to 2K clips at 30 frames per second or 1080 pixel at 60 frames per second. No video stabilization of any kind unless you have a gimbal hands like mine. The Itel RS4 runs on Android 13 with Itel's OS 13.5 overlay. All the basics are there with fewer blood waste. Other than that, not so much going on around here if you're used to Itel's user interface. For software upgrades, no news if this will be getting Android 14 anytime soon. However, the performance aspect is where things get going for the Itel RS4 as it's powered by the MediaTek Helio G99 Ultimate with 8GB of RAM plus 8GB of memory fission amounting to 16GB of RAM. For the most part, I have no problem with popular titles such as Call of Duty Mobile which was playable at medium to high graphics settings, as well as one of my favorite racing games that ran pretty smoothly most of the time. However, with very heavy games like Genshin Impact, you need to do some tweaks for a longer gaming session to avoid heating up. That's if you end up getting the RS4 without gaming accessories. It's not a flawless smartphone by any means, but you'll never see any other device that will match the Halo G99 Ultimate, 8GB of onboard RAM, 256GB of storage, good battery life and NFC support at this price. The downside however is the overall build quality and the main camera performance, which makes it not that good enough device for those who prioritize durability and cameras. So that's it guys, my review of the Itel RS4. As always, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you when next I talk to you. But before then, help us get to 10,000 subscribers by hitting the subscribe button, it means a lot here.